This is Gisela Moore, Project Manager of the Tennessee Entertainment Commission. I'd like to welcome Henry Hicks, President and CEO of the National Museum of African American Music, also known as NAMAM. Why did you choose to open the National Museum of African American Music in Nashville, Tennessee? You know, Tennessee kind of chose us. Uh, there were a couple of folks, a guy by the name of Francis Guess, who was at one time a commissioner in state government, as well as a gentleman by the name of T.B. Boyd, kind of dreamt up this idea for a Black History Museum in Nashville. You can find Black history and Black culture institution in other parts of the state, but there's nothing really in Nashville. And so that really was their idea. The last recession that we had in 2010 or so, we really started rethinking what Nashville's branding would be. And that, of course, sort of really built upon uh, this Music City branding. And then it was around the same time that the state of Tennessee actually came out with its tourism messaging that said the soundtrack of American music begins in Tennessee. And so when you put those two things together, it would make no better sense than the state capitol to have this museum. How has African American culture affected uh, Nashville's music industry as a whole? African American music and culture really was the beginning of Nashville's music uh, industry. And a lot of people don't think about it that way, but the Fish Jubilee Singers were actually the first group in the world to go on world tour. Uh, and then in the earliest days of the recording industry in Nashville, it was really more of the jazz and the rhythm and blues. Before there was Music Row over uh, on kind of the south side of the city, there was Music Row on the north side of the city uh, on Jefferson Street and even on Charlotte. Do you feel that this museum should be embraced by people of all races and those who love all types of music? Absolutely. We hope and we encourage folks from, again, from all walks of life to come on in and join the fun. I mean, I think that a part of what this museum provides the opportunity to do is to reinforce a narrative that has not often been told. If you are jamming to American music of any sort, it is really black music, y'all. And that's not to take anything away from the contributions of, of anyone or of any group of folks. But African-Americans built this country. African-Americans had their drums and their instruments taken away from them starting in 1619 when we were brought to this country and therefore had to innovate. So this museum will give the opportunity to tell that story and, and, and bring into the mainstream that message that African Americans are as a part of this America as anybody else. And so, you know, come on in and let's just have a good time together. If I'm someone that has, you know, loved country music or rock music, what would they be surprised to see if they decide to visit NAMAM? Well, you know, I think that they would be surprised to see that some of their favorite artists are included in the museum, uh, whether those artists are African-American or not. Uh, today, Elvis Presley comes to mind. His influences and his, his music, uh, despite his skin color, was really African-American music. We really think there's something there for everyone. If you're a music lover, you know, we hope that that uh, the color of our skin won't get in the way of you coming and having a good time in the museum. How do you think youth or our young minds will respond to name man when they visit for the very first time? People of, of all ages and certainly young people uh, love music. And so this will be a place that is full of fun. There'll be lots of interactives and things to touch and play. Uh, and although we will have cleaning crews coming right behind them to help us make sure we keep the place uh, safe given the environment that we're in today. We're in the process of completing a curriculum that matches the Tennessee state education standards. We are actually gonna offer some of our programs through the Quaver platform, which is a company, a digital education company based uh, here in Tennessee so that uh, school systems around the country can ac access them as well. What kind of economic impact do you feel NAMAM will bring to the state of Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, so one of the things that we have done on a regular basis is keep up with an economic impact study so that we have a pretty good sense of that. And so we believe that we'll have uh, 
about 400,000 visitors a year. And that, that, that includes about 140,000 new visitors to the state of Tennessee. And that uh, that will uh, create an economic impact of about $30 million. That is wonderful. We are so grateful. Thanks for having me.